Hello guys, um, welcome to API 510 Pressure Vessel Inspector online course. Thank you for buying our online course. Uh, we start with module one and in this module you shall learn about uh, exam and study tips, uh, how to apply for API 510 exam, what you should expect during the exam day, study plan, time management during the exam and some exam tips okay let's see how the api exam questions are developed uh, from time to time a question writing session is con conducted subject matter experts or individuals who specialize in pressure vessel they write question for a specific section of uh, the code and each question is then checked by three other subject matter experts SMEs this validation exercise check two items first is the question is written clearly and second does the question cover knowledge that's important to the vessel inspector then this question go into data bank uh, which is currently over a thousand question for each exam there shall be 170 question uh, of which only 140 are scored the remaining 30 questions are pretest test questions and not a score. So these questions are all shuffled together, so you don't know which one is scored or not a score. So you have to answer all the 170 questions. Now out of these 170 questions, 110 are closed book and 60 questions are open book. Okay, let's see how we should prioritize and plan uh, your study plan for API 510 pressure vessel inspector. Obviously everybody has got a limited amount of time, especially when you're working, so you need to invest your time wisely um, and concentrate on those reference documents more uh, that have uh, uh, contribute to uh, uh, more number of exam questions. Approximately half of the test questions are directly from API 510, so that's your priority. So, um, if some people even say that if you understand API 510 and don't even look at the other publications, uh, chances are you could pass. Obviously, we are not recommending this approach, but uh, this is an emphasis to say that um, uh, you should come read this API 510 inspection code thoroughly. So there would be 70 to 75 questions from API 510 inspection code, which is 60 pages long. That's more than one question per page. The remaining 85 to 90 questions comes from the rest of the reference documents or body of knowledge, which is 2000 page long. That would be roughly around one question for every 20 page. So you should spend your time again on API 510 than other publications. Uh, okay, let's see how you should commit yourself to uh, get the maximum efficiency out of, say, 60 hours of our e-learning course. In our e-learning course, we help you manage your time as well as focusing on key subjects in an organized and effective manner. Uh, so you can spread this out, the 60 hours, over uh, say 12 weeks period. So that means if you study 6 to 8 hours per week, that's roughly around 1, 1 and a half hour a day, that should be enough uh, to prepare you for the exam. And uh, you can do this 24-7 uh, from your laptop or your mobile phone. Um, so, but do not wait and cram the week prior to the exam. You may still be lucky to pass the test, but uh, uh, there would be little you will remember. Uh, because the, our online course is not only for passing the exam, but also sharing the knowledge. So it needs time for you to soak the concept and, you know, that sinking with you. Uh, Let's see how the questions are set, uh, or the nature of the question. The closed book questions are normally uh, crisp and short and fact-based. 
and you don't really need to refer to the uh, to the codes. So these are awareness question or practical type of question. They are like a specific do and don't statements, important quantified statements, important definitions, and well-known inspection principles. And those facts that are repeated again and again in the course, those are the potential exam questions. Uh, whereas the open book question are those questions that the candidate is required to refer to a diagram or a formula or a table or a graph and curve in the course. So this would be the open book type of questions, as well as all the calculation type of questions. They are open book. So they are not short and crisp. They are large paragraphs, several descriptive statements clubbed together, for example. They would be asked in open book part. Uh, so here you are not expected to remember this information but you should know where to find it in the body of the code so you should know how to navigate during the open book part again the questions asking closed book are straightforward statements directly from the code without much of the modification and therefore easy to answer uh, pay special attention to figures charts and the footnotes uh, to answer open book question, uh, you only need to know where to find the answer in the reference documents, therefore highlighting the paragraphs or putting explanatory notes, uh, that would help. We, are, we will highlight it during um, for each model so you know which are the, how to frequent and how to, you should pay attention also to the code pages that are frequented. Uh, Please note that it's very important to work with the PDF format because that's how uh, what is available to you during the exam. So if you go through the hard copy, you might find it difficult to find the same information on the PDF format. So right from the start, um, uh, try to navigate through the PDF format rather than the hard copy. Uh, also, please remember that API 510 code inspection code you should read from end to, um, beginning to the end and it should be thorough and total uh, while a study of other uh, reference code like ASME section 5, section 9 and section um, 8 um, is only uh, those parts that are in the body of the knowledge mentioned uh, and our e-learning course covers only the body of knowledge we have highlighted them for you so if you are a month away, read all the codes and concentrate on the highlighted text. If you are two weeks away, concentrate on the highlighted text as well as mock exam provided. And in the last week, focus on the flashcard and highlighted text from the codes and recommended practice. Um, so how you should manage your time during the exam. The closed book parts, 110 question. Uh, you are allow, allocated 2.75 hours, um, uh, but we believe you can uh, finish it within two to two and a half hours. Uh, the open book part, 60 question, depends how fast you can find the answer, is uh, 3.75 hours for 60 questions. Um, so always keep a tab of the clock on the right hand top corner of the computer screens. It shows the remaining time versus number of questions attempted. For closed book, you have an average of one and a half minutes per question. And for open book, you have 3.75 minutes per question. So this means you should answer 40 questions per hour for open book and 16 questions for closed book. It's always better to complete each part 15 to 30 minutes earlier and use that time to review the flagged off question and also ensuring that all questions are answered to the best of your knowledge because there is no negative marking. You may start from question number one, for example, and proceed. If after one hour you feel that you are maintaining the speed, that is 40 questions per hour for closed book and 16 questions for open book, that's fine. If however you are behind the required progress rate, start jumping the question. Those questions that you think is taking too much time, just flag it off and move to the next one. Start attempting those questions you can answer. Flag off and 
more question which you, whose answer you do not know and you can review it at the end there are chances are that uh, while you are answering the other questions uh, you will find the answer to the question that you didn't know and you flagged up uh, at the end start reviewing the mark question by clicking review marked question tab and then attempting using your fill factor go on like this until say the last 10-15 minutes if there are still some questions where you have no clue at all just mark the answer at random this may give you a few lucky points attempt all questions since there is no negative marking before the clock stops make absolutely sure that all questions are answered if you press the review all button you can also see whether you have answered all the questions or not the exam stops automatically once you run out of time or you click the end button in the exam okay this uh, is for people who are opted for our blended training that is e-learning plus classroom training um, the api body of knowledge covers a broad spectrum of knowledge um, which may many inspectors might not be exposed on a regular basis the classroom course is intensive uh, covering welding ndt welding procedure specification codes damage mechanisms inspection of pressure vessel and relief valve explanation of important terms exam tips and time management as well as solving sample question and q and a sessions all within five days so we expect that you have gone through the e-learning well enough have a minimum level of knowledge but a few with a few glitches our classroom training is aimed to bring the candidates into an acceptable level of knowledge so he or she is able to pass the exam you paid a lot of money and we also like high exam pass rate for our continued business naturally we believe if you have studied the e-learning course five days is enough to de-bottleneck and answer all your queries and uh, do a pulse check and go through all the topics important topics the current e-learning provided is worth 60 to 80 hours of study depending on your past experience and knowledge allocate uh, another 20 hours for solving the mock exam question um, analyze the area of knowledge you are already competent and then make a list of your weak areas as long as your weak areas are not part of the high percentage exam question segment you are safe otherwise you need to build up your strength on those areas to an acceptable level we have designed more questions in such a way to complement your knowledge and in line with actual exam question. When solving the mock or sample review question, you need to understand the underlying reason behind the right answer and also try to understand why other answers are wrong. This would help you immensely during the real exam by avoiding mistakes and trick questions. We have explained the reason for each correct answer whenever needed. So study e-learning regularly. Do not leave it until the day before the classroom training and then cram for hours. It rarely works. Remember, everyone is different. Uh, but the preparation you do, the more preparation you do, the easier the class to follow. And finally, the easier to pass the exam. Make notes on areas you may face difficulty and be prepared to raise them during the classroom training. We are here to help. Please note that we shall be running a very tight schedule during classroom training. So in order to cover the entire syllabus and as a token of respect to your fellow trainees, we expect the candidates to be specific and concise with their question. Our classroom training is not a brainstorming or a storytelling session. You can also chat or send feedback questions during e-learning as well as uh, before and after the classroom training everybody learns in their own way so adopt the style that suits you frequent short study periods are better than long intensive sessions let's have a look at the percentage of exam question per code and recommended practice as per effectivity sheet for api 510 there are four codes api 510 code asme codes 5 8 and 9 and four recommended practices prescribed for examination. However, all of them are not equally important and therefore do not require equal emphasis. About 45% of questions are asked from one code API 510 alone, which is some 60 pages long, while the rest contribute to 55% mark, which are some 2000 pages. 
So if you look at our table here, API 510 code and API 572 um, would constitute 50, around 50% 50 of the questions. ASME section 8, division 1, construction code for pressure vessel is around 10 to 12%. ASME section 9, welding and API 577, welding inspection and metallurgy, around 10 to 12%. ASME section 5, a non destructive testing um, uh, would constitute around 10 to 12%. API 571, damage mechanism, 5 to 6%. API 576, 3 to 4%. General knowledge and safety each, 2% to 3%. Let's see what is this uh, API core certificates are about. API 510 is one of the three core certifications, the other two being API 570, uh, piping inspection inspector, and API 653, above ground storage tank authorized inspector. So when you compare the body of knowledge of these three, approximately 30% of questions for all these three core certification are from the ASME codes and API recommended practices. Um, so ASME section 5, ASME section 9, API 571 and API 577 is um, unique between all these three codes. Most of the inspector plan to get at least three core certificate so it makes sense that once you have passed one of them you can go for the other two because you already covered 30% of the uh, course material for the other two. All API examination including API 510 are held three times a year and each exam window is two weeks long. The exam windows for API 510 for the year 2020 are January 3 to 17 and May 29 to June 12 and September 11 to September 25. The API 510 exam for the year 2021 would be more or less along the same windows. The pass rate for API 510 is currently between 55% to 60%. Prometric is subcontracted by API to hold the computer-based examination. After registering and getting the API approval, you can book an exam date at your selected Prometric test center. Prometric has 3,000 test centers across the globe to choose from. The deadline to get the API authorization email is two and a half months prior to select the test window. For exam schedule and application deadline, please visit our link below or go to API ICP. To get the API approval attending API 510 examination, you need to file the application form by registering with API ICP and you can use this link below or go to API ICP and apply. Uh, you should upload your qualification, provide two references and pay the fees. $940 if your company is not an API member or $730 if your company is an API member. Unfortunately, API does not grant individual membership like ASNT. Um, American Society of Non-Destructive Testing, so you can only avail the reduced fee if your company is an API member. There is no individual certification by API membership, sorry. Prerequisite. The minimum qualification requirement for API 510 pressure vessel inspector certification based on a combination of education and experience that you have acquired uh, within the last 10 years. So prior to submitting an application, please use the test table for example, if you are an engineer, graduate engineer with one year of experience on supervision or performance of inspection activities uh, on pressure vessel, uh, you are eligible to attend the exam. If you are a technician or higher national diploma, higher national certificates or uh, um, assistant engineer, then you need two years of experience. If you are a high school diploma, or equivalent, then it would be three years. And if you don't have any formal education, there would be five years of experience required. So verification of your experience by API 
is done uh, API send the link to your two references via email the link opens up a questionnaire listing your experience in various fields you have claimed and your references need to verify them so it's recommended to brief your references so they know which inspection fields and for how long you have claimed the experience for if possible sit with your references when they are responding to API experience verification email this would avoid any discrepancy that may result from your claimed experience against their verification so two weeks exam window what is this about please note that during registration with API you are required to select one of the available two weeks time window once the time window you have selected you cannot change it uh, which means that you can only sit for the exam within the selected two week window so unless you decide to reschedule and pay the fee for rescheduling $300 which is as good as failing the exam so remember if you do not attend the exam within the allocated two weeks window for any reason whatsoever such as being absent no show up at the exam date failing to book a slot getting sick non-availability of a slot in your preferred test center and failing to book an available slot in another test center uh, is as good as failing the exam itself in this situation you need to request a reschedule the same way as if you fail the exam and pay us dollar 300 application deadline so deadline to get your application approved prior to your selected test window is around two and a half months if your approval happens at the last minute you might not be able to find a suitable available date or worse than that you might not be able to get a seat at your favorite test center within the allocated two week window while the next available test center may be hundreds of miles away or even in another country because Prometric would uh, fill up the seats uh, on a first come first serve basis this is because Prometric has only 3000 test center offer for API exam job across the globe hence it is recommended that you register and get the API approval called API exam authorization notice email roughly four months prior to your scheduled exam that is do not choose the next immediate test window we recommend but choose the one that is three to four months away at least this is especially important for core API 510 exam for other non-core API exams there is a normally a good chance of getting the convenient test location and date at the next available test window so selecting the test center and exam date there are about some 3000 prometric testing centers worldwide to choose from all prometric testing center operate on the first come first serve basis therefore api do, cannot promise that you will be able to obtain a seat at your preferred location schedule your exam immediately after receiving your exam authorization notice email from api if the seat is not available try a different date or another location you can change the exam location and date still within the allocated two week window up to 30 days before the exam free of charge and between 5 to 29 days for a fee of us dollar 70 subject to availability for api core exams being a day-long test it is hardly possible to change the time and location really time limit for passing the exam api gives each candidate 12 consecutive months to pass an exam beginning the from from the first scheduled test window that means you can attempt an exam for a maximum of four consecutive times if you do not pass the exam within a year from your first scheduled exam window for any reason then you have to apply all over again and pay the full fees so schedule your exam with your closest parametric test center as soon as you receive the api authorization uh, one of our trainees actually received his api exam authorization notice for api 570 some seven months before the selected test window but attempted to book the pl a place with parametric only two months before the test window as a result his closest Prometric test center which was London was already full so he had to fly to Amsterdam Prometric test center to attend the exam therefore it's strongly recommended that you book your place as soon as you receive the API authorization notice remember API 510 is a full day exam so booking your favorite exam date and location may not be possible if you are late Prometric booking is on first come first serve basis uh, 
be at the promethe test center at least half an hour before the exam schedule time. API 510 is a day long exam and normally starts at 8.30 a.m. morning. Make sure you reach the promethe test center at least half an hour before the scheduled time. If you reach the test center 15 minutes after the scheduled start time, they may refuse to admit you. Okay, photo ID and security check. Well, so once you are at the test center on the scheduled date, uh, you will be required to present one valid and expired and original government issued photo ID with a signature, such a driver license, passport, national ID, or a military ID. Um, so in case the primary government issued photo ID do not have a signature, a second ID with signature must be presented. The ID identification must be in Latin characters. So prior to letting you to sit for the exam, parametric employees shall check your valid government photographic ID, ask you to sign in, check you with a metal detector, ask you to turn up your sleeves and trousers, check your pockets, look at your reading glasses to ensure it does not have any camera video recording device and ask you a security question such as date of birth and email address. You cannot carry anything with you except a bottle of water. No ornaments are allowed except a wedding ring. Prometric shall supply you with a couple of green color A4 size papers and a pencil for taking notes plus a simple calculator. Although you also have a icon of a calculator on your desktop. If you don't produce a valid government ID at the Prometric Test Center, you shall be refused entry and is treated as a no-show up, which is as good as failing the exam. Also make sure your government issued photo ID, driving license, passport is valid. Uh, during API 5, 653 exam, one of our candidates driving license uh, was expired and he was refused entry, although he returned half an hour later with a valid passport. But by that time, it was too late, Prometric said. As a result, he had to pay the rescheduling fee and appear for the exam six months later. It's uh, recommended to check your photo ID to ensure it's valid. As plan B, try carrying even two foot valid photo ID, government issues. It's simply not worth it to be refused at the exam center for an ID issue after all the time, effort, and money you have spent. Prior to examination, you shall be given the key to a locker to keep your belongings. You are not allowed to use the locker until you have completed the exam. However, you are allowed to use the locker during the 45 minutes break. Okay, tutorial. There is a tutorial prior to exam and it explains how the buttons work. You can also find the tutorial from this link or go to API ICP and look for tutorial. Uh, there is a lot of useful information there that familiar layers view with the exam environment. You can end the tutorial session earlier whenever you feel comfortable enough working with the icons. The exam would automatically start after the 10 minutes allocated time for the tutorial or if you end it earlier. The icons are simple and user friendly. Remember that you can flag off those questions you are not sure of so you can return back to them during the remaining time. You can also right click on selected answer to eliminate them if you are confident that they are definitely the wrong answer. This will narrow down the possible right answer and therefore increase your chance of getting the right answer. You can either review all the question once again or review the flagged off question or review incomplete question, question you have not attempted by clicking on respective tabs during any remaining time. The exam ends automatically when the remaining time showing on the right hand corner of the screen reaches zero. No negative marking. The passport is roughly 70% for all the API examination as API uses scale grading to standardize degree of difficulty for the exam. No negative marking is applied. Therefore, it is recommended to answer all the question. At the end, click the review all button and peruse through the list to ensure that you have not skipped any question. You can also check review incomplete question to ensure there is nothing on the list. That is no question left unanswered. API 5 exam sequence. API core examination contain two parts. First, you would answer the closed book part, 2 hours 45 minutes for some 110 questions. After that, you have a maximum 45 minutes break where you can leave the building and also use the locker. After the break, 
you would start the second part, open book, and need to answer some sexy questions with uh, 3 hours 45 minutes of allocated time using the reference documents in PDF format available on the computer screen. The word search is disabled, so you should know which document or also which section you should look for each, each question. Uh, if you cannot find it, go to the table of contents. If you cannot find it there, go to the table of a uh, list of figures or list of tables. Chances are you can find uh, the right page uh, to answer the open book question. We shall explain how you navigate between the documents to find the right answer chart or formula you need to solve an open book exam question in the following modules. 45 minute exam break between closed book and open book parts. Remember that the open book or second part of the API core examination automatically starts after the 45 minutes break or if you start the second part sooner by pressing the end the break button. This means you should start your second part of examination no later than 45 minutes after completing the first part in order not to lose any time. Try to report to the examination center around five minutes before the end of 45 minute break to allow for time spent going through the security check and signing. During API 510 examination, one of our candidates went for a lunch and returned half an hour late. So by the time he started the second part of the exam, he was already some 30 minutes short of the allocated 3 hours 45 minutes because after the 45 minutes break, the time for second part of the test keeps running automatically regardless of whether you are on, at your desk or not. So tips on time management during exam. Remember, if you need to leave the examination room for say using the toilet or drinking water, you need to take your ID with you, report to the security outside the examination room, and sign out. On return, you shall go through the same initial security check and sign in. During all this time, the clock is running. Remember, your exam is not concluded until your time is up or when you press the end exam button, which asks for confirmation to ensure that you have not pressed it accidentally. You can also see the list of attempted and non-attempted questions by pressing the review all button. This would ensure that you have not left a question unanswered. You can see the remaining time on the upper right hand corner of the screen. There are good, few good tutorials in the API ICP, Individual Certification Program website. Remember that the clock does not stop when you use the bathroom or when you wish to make a comment on a particular question or for any other reason. So use the allocated time wisely. The allocated time seems to be more than enough to answer all the questions as well as review them. Number of exam questions. We said again that it was before that it was 170 questions out of which 140 are scored. Remaining 30 are pretest questions and not marked towards the score, meaning that this pretest question does, do not affect your score, whether you have answered them correctly or incorrectly. API does not tell you which ones of these questions are scorable or non-scored. The reason for this non-scored pretest question is that API frequently adds up new questions to their existing question bank. API needs to ensure that these questions are not significantly challenged by the candidates and also answered by a reasonable number of people before adding them to their uh, permanent question bank as a scored question. Exam results. Immediately after completion of the exam, you shall receive an email notifying you whether you have passed or failed. Your preliminary exam results may be a preliminary pass, which is normally a pass, a preliminary marginal, which is too close to call, or a preliminary not pass, which is a fail, normally. You shall receive your confirmed score up to eight weeks after the last day of the two-week examination window. Sometimes sooner, it takes around another six to eight weeks to receive the certification and the wallet card if you have passed. If you fail, you need to apply for rescheduling and pay 300 US dollar. You shall receive the exam authorization approval email normally within two to three working days. You shall then book your seat with the Prometric test center as soon as possible. Certification and recertification and cost. So API 510 is valid for three years and would cost 
$940. After three years, you need to apply for recertification demonstrating that you still work as an API 510 inspector for 20% of the time. Recertification cost $730 US dollar. You may apply for recertification 90 days prior to recertification, expiration date, and for a 90 day grace period after expi your certificate expires. So if an application is not submitted by the end of 90 day grace period, the certification will expire. So you have to apply for a new, you should uh, submit a new application, pay the full fee and appear for the exam, the full version of it. API inspectors are required to take an online open book quiz every six years in order to recertify. Each quiz is 25 question that addresses the changes in the API codes over the past six years, all the eratas and all. So you have a total of four hours to complete the quiz and you can do it from the comfort of your home and you can even pause the quiz or interrupt it up to three times within four hours. If you fail the quiz once, you will be able to get it, uh, take it again. If you fail the quiz a second time, you will not be able to recertify. You will need to submit a new application and take the full version of the exam to certify again. Publication Effectivity Sheet and Body of Knowledge. Publication Effectivity Sheet is the list of applicable reference documents that you need to study for the exam. It also tells you which section of document are applicable. It can be revised from time to time when the codes and recommended practices or the addendum are revised and becomes applicable. So you need to not only read the publication effectivity sheet, but also the right revision of it. Red color coded text within the publication effectivity sheet indicate a revision or a change from the previous API effectivity sheet. Body of knowledge also lists the reference codes and recommended practices without revision number and elaborates on topics that a pressure vessel inspector needs to know, giving examples. It shows what you are expected to know. Our e-learning is particularly designed around the reference documents and the body of knowledge and are revised accordingly as and when the publication effectivity sheet and body of knowledge changes. Area of examination scores. Uh, you can see on this uh, list that uh, you would have uh, five questions from scope and general application of 510, 15 questions from damage mechanisms, 15 questions about repairs, 15 questions from non-destructive examination, 15 questions from welding, 10 questions from design, 20 questions from planning, and 15 questions from inspection and testing practices, 4 questions from pressure relief valves, 20 questions from data evaluation, six questions about roles and responsibilities. This would be a total of 140 scored questions. Okay, we'll give you several exam tips here. Um, when you're doing your calculation, um, round to the third decimal place. For example, if it's 0 0.0075, um, round it to 0 0.007, so and find the correct answer in the question or 0 0.0993 would be 0 0.099 so it's rounded to three digits same way so if it's 239 psi I mean it could if your calculation shows 293 239.3 psi uh, you can round it to 239 really um, so since both metric and British units are used, sometimes the data are given in inches or foot, but the multi-choice answer is in millimeter or meter. So be careful on unit conversion. Be careful what they have given the data you for and what they, they in what uh, uh, unit they are asking about the answer. Uh, API exam never uses the following types of answer, all of the above, both A and B, none of the above. These answers, they are not there. A sort of answer. There would be just one unique answer for each question. Um, use common sense, reason it out. It's likely a correct answer to a very easy question, really. 
A lot of questions are derived from basics, definitions, meanings, scopes, and exclusions. We will share all these concepts and knowledge. So if you had a question in a context, you can, any, you can answer them. Try using PDF copy of reference document as much as possible when solving open book question. It helps navigate through documents more easily during the exam. Sitting for exam can be stressful, especially because it's like a marathon, a day long exam, some seven and a half hours. So try to sleep early the night before, stop reading on the exam day, just peruse the important part of the reference documents for like say half an hour or so, or look at the figures and charts for around half an hour really. Uh, let your brain rest because you need to be alert and full of energy to endure the day long score exam. So during the exam, you can increase your chance of choosing the correct answer by eliminating the obvious wrong answer. To eliminate them, hold the mouse on the answer you think is wrong and right click. It will cross it, helping you to concentrate on the remaining possible answer. You can also challenge any question you may wish uh, by writing on its comment sheet. But please note that the clock keeps running, so you shall be spending from your allocated time. During practice session and the mock exam we have provided, try actually solving the calculation type mock question, even if it's a simple multiplication or addition or a subtraction. Uh, and it looks too easy. Because until you don't practice solving the question, you would not get the feel of it. Practice always also helps you solving the calculation a lot faster while avoid making silly mistakes during the exam. Significant number of questions is aimed at verifying your comprehension of principles and theory. So try to understand the basics rather than simply memorizing the numbers as it would be of little help. Remember, API does not normally want you to memorize the numbers or formulas during the closed book examinations unless extensively used in the industry. Is of everyday usage or specifically mentioned in the body of knowledge. During the remaining module, we shall show you which facts and figures you may need to remember. Some questions include irrelevant information that might not look confusing. API wants to verify that you can differentiate between relevant and irrelevant information. The trick is to understand the question, what is wanted, and then look at the relevant formula to find out what information is required to calculate the answer. Make a quick list of a known and unknown parameters, dismissing the irrelevant information, then simply use the formula to solve the equation. Pay particular attention uh, to charts, tables, figures, and also the footnotes within the reference books and try to understand the rationale. We shall explain major tables, charts, and figures and shall point out those important footnotes during our e-learning courses and classroom training. Uh, during open book examination, if you don't find the topic within a code, look at the table of content, the list of figures and the list of tables. If you still can't find it within one to two minutes tops, then flag it off, make a note of question number on the paper and go to the next question. There is a high chance of encountering the topic when looking for other topics on subsequent question, in which case you can go back to the flagged off question and solve it within seconds. More exam tips are discussed during other modules and also the classroom training if you have opted for the blended package. This is the end of module one. Thank you for listening and join us on module two.